Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We're going to do some derivative shortcut rules in this video. We're going to do our power rule, rule for sums and differences, and also the constant multiple rule, which is different than the constant rule. First up here is our power rule. If we have the derivative with respect to x of just x to some number, some constant, then the power rule tells us that that is n times x to the n minus one power. So what that's really saying is, when our variable is the base and we have a constant exponent, what we'll end up doing to get our derivative is we will multiply on the outside by the original exponent we started with, whatever n is, and then we will subtract one from the exponent and that will give us the derivative of our x to some power. Make sure that when we're talking about a power rule, we have a variable to a constant. So here examples, we have derivative with respect to x of x cubed, x to the third, variable and number, x to the five, variable to the number, x to the negative two, variable to the number. Some non-examples here, something like three to the x, doing the derivative of that, that's not a power rule. That is number to a variable. This is what we call an exponential. Here we have variable to a variable, that's different. And here we have e squared. These are both numbers. This is just a number here. So this would be the derivative of a constant. So make sure you're doing the derivative of x to some number or t to some number or whatever your variable is. Let's look at doing a few of these. So we have the derivative with respect to x of x cubed, x to the third. So remember our rule says, first thing we do is we multiply out front by our original exponent. So the three is going to come out and multiply on the outside. So we'll get three and then we need to subtract one from the power. So our x cubed becomes x squared. So three multiplied on the outside, power goes down by one. The derivative of x cubed is three x squared, much shorter than the limit definition for derivatives, yeah? All right, so here we have derivative with respect to x of x to the five. So here the five comes out and multiplies in the front. Subtracting one from the power will give us x to the four. For this one here, x to the negative two, our negative two will come out front, so we'll get equals negative two. X to the, if I subtract one from negative two, I get negative three. And I have negative two, x to the minus three. So one thing we might wanna remember at this point in time is that negative powers of x are actually reciprocals, right? So another way to write x to the negative three without a negative exponent, as some may like to see it, we would say negative two over x to the third, or negative two over x cubed. So that is our derivative of x to the minus two. So one thing we wanna remember then is that reciprocals are actually negative powers, right? So let's think about if you had the derivative with respect to x of one over x, this may look tricky at first, but if you can see this as the derivative with respect to x of actually x to the negative one, and see it as a power, now you can use the power rule, right? Because our power rule says I can now bring the multiple out front, negative one, and then decrease this by one, so we'll get x to the negative two. And then if I want to write this without a negative exponent, I can say negative one, and I can say that's x squared in the denominator. So negative one over x squared. For this one here, derivative with respect to x of one over x to the five, that's going to be the same as saying the derivative with respect to x of x to the negative five. And so now we just simply take the exponent out front, multiply, give us negative five, and then the power goes down by one. Subtracting one gives us negative six. And if we want to write this without a negative exponent, we could say negative five, and that would be x to the sixth in the denominator. So negative five over x to the sixth. Something else we might want to remember that our powers that we might not see right away, square roots, cube roots, any type of root is a power. Square root is the one half power. Cube root is the one third power. So the fourth root is the one fourth power. Remember that roots are fraction powers. So if we look at some examples here, the derivative with respect to x of square root x, we want to think of this as a power so we don't have to remember some separate square root rule. So this is going to be the same as the derivative with respect to x of x to the one half. And now we'll use the power rule that says multiply the one half out front. We'll subtract one from the power, so that will actually be x to the one half minus one is actually going to give you negative one half. And then to write this maybe a little nicer, uh, first of all, this negative in the exponent is telling us reciprocal, right? So that might say one over two x to the one half. 
But now additionally, remember x to the 1 half is really square root x, right? So we might also see this written as 1 over 2 and then have a square root x in the denominator as well. So 1 over 2 times square root x. If we look at this derivative with respect to x of the cube root of x, well, that's going to be the same as saying the derivative with respect to x of x to the one-third power. And we'll just use a power rule here, right? So that will be multiplied by the one-third out front. We'll get one-third. And then we'll get x to the one-third minus one is negative two-thirds. So a couple of things here. Uh, my negative, again, so I could think of that in the denominator, 1 over 3 x to the 2 thirds. That gets rid of the negative and the exponent. And now a couple of things here. This is a cube root. We still have a, a third in our fraction. But now this 2 in the numerator of our fraction in the power, that actually says square. So we have a square and we have a cube root. So we might see this as 1 over 3 and we would have the cube root, so we would put a 3 index out there of our root, and we would have x squared. So this is the 2 thirds power, x squared, and then cube root is 2 thirds power. And so we have 1 over 3 cube root of x squared. Let's look additionally at some combos of I have reciprocal and then I also have roots. So the derivative with respect to x of 1 over the fourth root of x. So that is in a root. So it is the one-fourth power of x, but it's also in the denominator, so that's actually a negative power, right? So that's the negative one-fourth power of x. So if we use the power rule here, our negative one-fourth is going to come out. If I subtract one from negative one-fourth, that will give me negative five-fourths. And then here, remember, I have reciprocal from the negative. I'll have a type of root from the denominator here, and then I will have a power of x inside that root from the numerator there. So lots of stuff to do here, right? We have negative 1 over, let's try and change this all at once. We have 4, and then we have a fourth root, so I'm going to put a fourth root, and inside of that fourth root I'm going to put an x to the 5. Let's look at one more. We have the derivative with respect to x of 1 over the square root of x cubed. Okay, so sort of thinking reverse how we went from this 5 fourths exponent to x to the fifth fourth root. Think about here, I have x cubed and then I have the square root. So the cube is going to give me the top of the fraction in my power. The type of root, which is a square root, is going to give me the denominator in my exponent. So now this is also in the bottom of a fraction, so this is really the negative 3 halves power of x. We have reciprocal, we have cube, and we have square root all represented here. We go ahead and multiply by our power out front. Using the power rule, we will subtract 1, negative 3 halves minus 1 will give us negative 5 halves. And then let's see if we can convert this back all at once as well. We have reciprocal, we have a square root, and then we have a fifth power here as well. So we'll say negative 3 over 2. Our x is going to be down below in a square root, and it will have x to the 5 inside. So square root of x to the 5. All right, another rule that we want to do is make sure that we know the sum and difference rule. This says the derivative with respect to x of some function plus or minus some other function is the same as taking the derivative of each one separately and then adding or subtracting. This is really just telling us that we can take the derivative of an expression one term at a time. We just want to remember that terms, when we talk about that, are separated by add and subtract. So not a term multiplied by another term or a term divided by another term. Let's look at a couple of examples here. If we have the derivative with respect to x of x to the fourth plus x squared, then that's going to be the same as saying do the derivative with respect to x of x to the fourth and then add the derivative with respect to x of x squared. Okay, so if we do that here, power rule, we get the 4 coming out front and we get the power going down by 1, so that would become 4x cubed 
plus for this one, we get the two coming out front, so two. The power goes down by one, we get x to the one. And generally we don't want to write x to the one. That's not as nice and as simple as we can say. x to the one is really just x, right? So here we'll say four x cubed plus two x. So that's our first example, just evaluating derivatives one term at a time. Let's look at our second one here. Derivative with respect to x of x to the eight minus x. So think of this again separately, just one term at a time. We'll go ahead and write it down this way one more time. Derivative with respect to x of x to the eight. Now notice you have a minus here, right? So minus the derivative with respect to x of just x. And these are both power rules. Do you see it? So derivative with respect to x of x to the eight is going to be an eight out front and subtracting one from the power will give us x to the seven. Minus, now think here, x is really x to the one, so this is still a power rule. One comes out front, and we get x to the zero. Now what is x to the zero? Well, x to the zero should be one, right? So really the derivative of x, we're just going to get one if we take off that x to the zero. So we get eight x to the seven minus one here for this answer. Okay, one more short rule for derivatives here, the constant multiple rule. Last one in our video. This says the derivative of a constant multiple of a function is going to be the same as the constant pulled outside times the derivative of the function itself. This is different than the derivative of a constant. Remember, the derivative of a constant by itself is zero. This is saying when you have a constant multiple of a function, so some number times a function in general that you could factor out. Okay, so looking here, the derivative with respect to x of 4x cubed, I'm going to write this this way one time. I'm going to factor out the constant multiple of 4. So this is going to be the same as 4 times the derivative of just the x cubed now. So think about what we get. We get 4 times, what's the derivative of x cubed using the power rule? So the 3 comes out front and the power goes down by one, so we get x squared, and so then four times the three x squared actually gives us 12 x squared for this first one. Let's look at our next one here, and we're going to actually do a little bit different writing. So I'm gonna go ahead and write down each term, um, and I'm not going to do any factoring out this time. I wanna think of this a little bit differently. So the derivative with respect to x of five x squared plus the derivative with respect to x of 9x. And what we want to do is instead of needing to additionally factor out and write that step, just think about that 5 is going to be there, right? So when I take the derivative of just the x squared part, what's going to happen? The 2 is going to come out front and multiply. And you already have a 5 there, so you keep that constant multiple. The 2 comes out and multiplies the 5, so we actually would get 10. And then the power goes down by 1, and so that would just be x to the 1, right? Plus, here I have a 9 out front. This 9x is really like 9x to the 1. So leave the constant multiple of 9. When I do the power rule, the 1's going to come out and multiply the 9. That will really stay a 9, right? And then we'll get x to the 0. That power will go down by 1. So obviously 10x to the 1 is just going to be 10x. And then 9 times x to the 0 is just going to give us 9 there. Okay, let's look at this other one here. We have the derivative with respect to x of two over x minus three x to the six. We want to see this as the derivative with respect to x of two x to the negative one minus three x to the six. I'm going to leave these all as one statement and just work through these from left to right. So keep your constant multiple of two, do your power rule. The negative one comes out front, multiplies what's already there, so that gives you a negative two, and then the power would go down by one. So subtracting one here would give us x to the negative two minus, keep your constant multiple of three. When we do the power rule for x to the six, the six comes out front and multiplies the three that's already there. So three times six gives you 18 in the front, and the power goes down by one, and so we get x to the five. We might rewrite this expression when we have x to the minus two, so we might say negative two over x squared minus 18 x to the five. And just a real quick couple last examples illustrating how the constant multiple rule 
and the constant rule are different. Okay, so in this first one, derivative with respect to x of 3x to the 4, this is the stuff that we were just doing. We would keep the 3 when we do the power rule. The 4 comes out and multiplies the constant multiple 3 that's already there. So we'll get 12, and then the power goes down by 1, so we'll get x cubed. Okay, that is all one term, so this is a constant multiple. If we're doing the derivative with respect to x of 3 plus x to the 4, now these are separate terms, and this term here is a constant. When I do the derivative of 3, I get 0, because the derivative of a constant is 0. And then in this term, when I do it separately, the 4 comes out, so I get plus 4, and then the power goes down by 1, x cubed, and so here we get 0 plus 4x cubed, in other words, 4x cubed, okay? So make sure when you have a constant, is it a constant multiple, or is it just a constant term whose derivative would be 0 all by itself? Make sure we are paying attention to the difference as we move forward with these. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.